Chelsea making money from their youth academy is nothing new. Between 2015 and 2022, they made hundreds of millions of euros from their academy. And in the summer of 2023 alone, they raised more than 100 million euros selling homegrown players. But what is it that makes their academy better than other Premier League teams? Why is it so good? Chelsea began to invest heavily in their youth department programme during the early years of Roman Abramovich's ownership. Their state-of-the-art 140-acre training facility at Cobham, in Surrey, was opened in 2007. It was constructed at a cost of £20 million and houses the club's men's and women's first team and the academy. In 2016, Chelsea's academy package of facilities, coaching and educational provision was graded Category 1 the highest distinction under the Elite Player Performance Plan, the set of rules and guidelines that governs youth development within the Premier League and EFL. But for the club's pristine facilities and elite-level coaching to be effective in producing top-level professional players, they must be combined with a consistent stream of raw talent to be moulded and developed. And it seems it is the Blues' relentless approach to talent identification and acquisition that sets them apart among English football's top academies. They do things quicker than other academies, much quicker, says Martin Taylor, who worked as a scout for Chelsea for 14 years. If I recommended a boy to Chelsea, they'd have him in and they'd make a decision. If he's a good player, they don't hang around. Other clubs will take three or four weeks. Chelsea don't wait that long. It's a well-oiled machine. If there's a real top player that they find out about, they do everything to get him. They're very aggressive in getting players. Now, EPPP rules dictate that, up until the age of 14, Category 1 clubs are restricted to signing players who live within a radius of a 90-minute drive from their academy. In order to expand their permitted catchment zone, Chelsea operate 11 satellite training centres in London and its surrounding areas, allowing them to scout and sign some of the best young players in one of Europe's richest talent hotbeds. What they do, they just filter them through, says Ian Brewster, the father of Sheffield United striker Rianne Brewster, who spent seven years with Chelsea's academy, beginning with a brief stint with one of those satellite centres. When I spoke to a scout, he said, you don't realise how lucky you are, because Rianne has come in right at the end and he's got straight in. He said to me, roughly, we'd have gone through 350 to 400 boys. Now, since 2010, Chelsea's youngsters have twice won the UEFA Youth League, European Youth Football's Champions League equivalent, and the FA Youth Cup an astounding seven times. Throughout much of that period, though, Chelsea were criticised for failing to provide a first-team pathway for the club's young stars, with many either sold or getting stuck in a cycle of loan moves with lower division or European sides. I defended the academy when there was pressure and doubt and pessimism. Michael Emanalo, Chelsea's former director of football, told The Telegraph in 2019, There was a time when there was a clamour to do more, and a manager came in to make a presentation to say that the academy was not necessary. The argument was that it takes too long. We don't have time. We should use it to make some money here and there, and that the owner should stop pumping money into it because it seemed like a waste. The nadir for the academy's first team productivity came during the single-season Stamford Bridge reign of Maurizio Sarri. The Italian tactician didn't give a single debut to a youth player, nor reportedly did he ever even attend an academy training session or an under-23 match. A transfer ban and a club legend returning as a manager with a youth-focused philosophy proved the turning point. Frank Lampard's initial 18-month spell in charge of the Blues delivered little success on the pitch, but in the 2019-20 season, with Chelsea unable to buy new players, the former England midfielder gave debuts to eight academy graduates, including Mason Mount and Rhys James. It was the most debuts given to youth players in a single campaign by any manager in the club's history. Lampard also made Tammy Abraham and Fikayo Tomori, who'd previously made only four appearances between them, regular starters for the senior side. And since then, the pipeline has continued to produce. For the 2021-22 season, Chelsea topped the website Training Ground Guru's Academy Productivity Rankings, a study that evaluates every academy based on the number of its alumni to have featured within the top four divisions of English football. Chelsea have not just been building a team, they've been building everyone else's, wrote The Guardian journalist Jonathan Liu. And the club's finely calibrated balance between producing players for their own first team and selling young stars for huge sums has continued under the club's new owner, Todd Bowley. In 2022, a report by the CIES Football Observatory listed Chelsea as the most profitable academy in the Premier League, 
with player sales amounting to 210 million euros since July 2015. And in July 2023, a study by the PA news agency found that Chelsea Academy products racked up just over 21,000 minutes of playing time in the Premier League the previous season, more than any other club. Ahead of the 23-24 season, Academy graduates Mason Mount, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Ethan Ampadu, Callum Hudson-Odoi and Lewis Hall were sold for an eye-watering combined return of £117 million, while Rhys James became the club's first homegrown full-time captain since John Terry, and fellow youth team products Connor Gallagher and Levi Colwell assumed significant first-team roles. In their stated vision for 2030, Chelsea re-emphasised their commitment to academy excellence. Among their listed goals is the aim to have academy graduates account for 15% of the team's Premier League minutes, and to make up 25% of the senior squad. I think always the record was fantastic, and we again need to reinforce and energise the academy, manager Maurizio Pochettino said shortly after his appointment. First, because we believe in them, and then because Chelsea was famous for bringing good players from the academy to the first team. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.